Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Did it. Did it. <laughs> what are we doing today? Beating up clay. <laughs> so usually we like plan things out. Like I have to buy things in advance for these art projects that we do. Did we do that this week? We did not do We that. did not do that this week. So you want to know what we landed on? Well, I guess you already know because you just saw the title of the video. We're going to try our darndest to make a star fragment light from Animal Crossing. If this works, it's gonna be a cherished- Family heirloom. Yeah, fair, fair, family heirloom. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so cool. I, I have big dreams for this. Cause like, if I could do this and I could make all the different colored ones too. Why would I want a bazillion star fragment lights in my apartment? I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. That's the real question, I feel like. Yeah. We're going to try to build a star fragment out of clay. So I've got some tin foil. We're going to try to build one. I'm going to try to mold it with silicone. And then we're going to try to cast it with resin. I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm actually really nervous. I'm just not the best with clay. You're going to do fine. All you have to do is make lumps. <laughs> it's more than lumps. It's more than lumps. So anyway, we're gonna change up the angle so that you guys can see uh, how I how 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 this works out. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna do is get out some tin foil and I'm gonna try to like form a ball. So long, I'm gonna try to quickly explain this. <laughs> quickly <laughs> explain this. I have to kind of form a ball out of tin foil for like the center of the star, and I need it to be as big as this. Yes. We're doing molds in molds again because I'm addicted to it now. The way that I want to make this like turn into a light is I want to put this light bulb mold inside the star mold the same way that we did the snow globe. So the center of the star kind of has to be at least as big as like this part of the light bulb mold. So something that Sean just reminded me of is that when you're trying to make a mold of something, a lot of times it will like the object itself, when you pour the silicone around it, the object will start to float up and out of the silicone. So I have rocks. <laughs> and what we could do is grab a few of these rocks and then build the tinfoil like ball around the rocks. That way it'll kind of weigh it down maybe. Rocks in the middle. afraid that I'm gonna smash my fingies. Ah, those chocolate ball things with, with candies inside. Yep. What are they called? Essentially double disappointment. Wonder ball? Wonder ball. Wonder ball. Here is our tinfoil ball. It's not like super heavy, but it's definitely way more heavy than it would be without the rocks, obviously. So now we're gonna start building clay around it. Hey, so it's voiceover artsy mad woman to explain the process. So I'm just covering the tinfoil ball with clay and then we're also starting to form the points. I believe there are six around the side, two in the middle, two on the other side. I know that they're quite lumpy right now, but we're just working out like where they're gonna go. And then after, once they're all on, I'm gonna shape them and kind of fix them up and smooth them out. So that is 10 points total. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just getting all the points on like kind of roughly and then I'm going to smooth everything out. Why do they all look like thumbs? <laughs> Stop. When you okay, you guys, when you separate the color from like how this looks and like maybe the texture, it looks like a star fragment. Like I'll I'll put one, I'll put a picture of a star fragment here. Like they they look pretty similar, don't they? Like take away the color it looks like a star fragment. Okay, I'm gonna get the other side, these spikies on, which I think is gonna be pretty difficult. Okay, so here is our clay star fragment so far. I think it looks really good. It's obviously not perfect, but guess what? I don't care. I think it looks good at like certain angles when it like sits at the right spots at the right time. Um, here we go, here's a good, here's a good view. Look at it like this it looked like a star fragment. We actually have to take this home and put it in the oven because this is oven baked clay. Uh, so we're probably gonna bake this at home. And then what I think I'm also gonna do at home is glaze it really quick. So I have this Sculpey glaze. 
Um, I think we used this in the other pottery video with the pumpkins. So this just kind of dries in 24 hours. So I think what I'm gonna do is once this is out of the oven and it's totally baked, I'm just gonna paint a bit of this on. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I were to make a mold around this, like after it's baked, the mold would come out matte because that's the texture of the clay here. But if I paint it with some glaze, let that dry, then the texture of the mold will come out shiny because I glazed it. So I think I'm gonna do this and then we're gonna let this whole thing dry overnight, 24 hours, then we'll be back tomorrow to actually pour some silicone around it. So we baked our star fragment at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. And then once it came out of the oven and cooled off, I did paint two coats of this Sculpey glaze on it to make it shiny and ready for molding. Okay, so it is the next day and here is our star fragment so far. So I did two coats of that glazed stuff that you guys saw me do yesterday. It's all baked, glazed, and ready to go. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited. So I have like a little Lego, they're just like little Lego sheets. Yeah. And then you build on top of them because we're gonna be building the mold for this with Legos. So right now I am just like kind of planning out the general size of the mold that I'm gonna be making and just kind of like outlining the star to get like the perfect size mold. Because I feel like that's the great thing with making molds with Legos is that you can make it any size. All right, so the borer is built. That means I'm just gonna start building up. And now we're on to the annoying process of building the mold up. And I always underestimate, always, always have, always will. So we have built up the walls and I don't know why I always underestimate how many Legos I'm gonna need for something like this, but we've had to use the little funky ones and it doesn't really matter. We're gonna start mixing up the silicone and pour it in. All right, so this is the silicone that I'm gonna be using. It's just Mold Star 15 Slow. But the silicone is a like two part system, a lot like resin. So I'm gonna pour the entirety of both containers into this bowl and then we're gonna mix it together. So like I said, I do get these bottles from Amazon and they're just kind of like the trial kits. So that's why they're so small, but I should probably invest in the bigger ones. And now we mix in until there are no streaks and it's completely mixed together. All right, it's the moment of truth. We're gonna see if there's enough silicone because that's another thing that I always underestimate is how much silicone I need. So for pouring the silicone into the mold, I am pouring it like in as thin of a stream as I can get it because I've heard that this helps get bubbles out. Okay, so I done goofed. Again, <laughs> every time we make a mold, I goof. I'm just not a mold maker. What I do know about silicone and making silicone molds, silicone sticks to silicone. So what I can do is let this cure or dry and then I'm gonna order another kit cause I get these from Amazon so I should get it in like a day or two. So I'm gonna order another kit of this silicone and then I'll be able to mix that up and pour it in and it'll stick to the silicone and you won't even tell that it was two different, two different kits. I guess let's let this dry and then next time I see you guys we'll have another kit and we'll finish off this mold. And now we're on to kit number two and believe it or not, this ends up not being enough. <laughs> I did get an extra kit. Thank goodness for that. Cause I was like, this, th I am not going through this again. I'm going to get two kits and thank goodness. Cause I needed both. So we are pouring the silicone in, in a thin stream once again, uh, into the same spot as well. And I'm just kind of filling it up. All right, you guys, it is the next day. And thank goodness I bought two extra kits of silicone because <laughs> we had to use both. So what we're going to do is <laughs> is this thing is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I was like, oh, he's just a little star, he's a little, little guy. Uh, no, it's like huge. First, I'm gonna just peel it off. Ta -da! The bottom piece of the Lego, so that is the bottom, and you can see the little feet of the star. I'll probably change up the angle so you guys can see me like take this apart. So we're gonna take apart the walls of the Legos and then just have the silicone mold. I lost sleep over this last night, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I lost sleep over thinking about how I'm gonna make this look the best that it can. So anyway, we just need to get into it because I'm very, <laughs> I'm very nervous about it. I actually wanted to also show you that when you do like Lego molds like this, the silicone will leak through a little bit, but as you can see, like it's not 
it's not crazy. My process for taking these Legos off is to just peel off the top couple of layers of Legos and then I'll take a popsicle stick like I'm doing here. I'm going to show you a better shot in a second. So I kind of just wedge this popsicle stick into the side between the mold and the Legos and I kind of just push the Legos off of the mold and it usually helps. Sometimes popsicle sticks uh, break but it does work. Okay, the mold has been released from all the Legos and this is what the sides are looking like. <sighs> so this is the part that I lost sleep over. I obviously have to cut away some part of the bottom of the silicone here so that I can, one, get the light bulb in, two, because I need, two, because <laughs> I need uh, somewhere to pour the resin into. I know I could put like string lights in there and like resin the string lights in, but whenever I do that, to be honest, it doesn't, feel efficient it feels like once those lights die i know they last like super long but once those lights die like i can't replace them so i want to have a hole in the middle to be able to take a light in and out this point here is one of the feet uh so we've got foot 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 and then this is the bottom which apparently touches since these points are touching anyway i think what i'm gonna do is cut them like this cut them open and then kind of see where we're at i kind of want to take this slow and like think it out and make sure that I don't ruin it. So I'm just using my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna cut away the bottom. It helps to kind of pull the silicone up and then like saw to the side. I'm trying to be careful to only cut away the silicone that's like touching the bottom. So yeah, like I said, I do just kind of like pull the silicone up and get my fingers out of the way and then like saw to the side until I kind of get around the shape that I'm cutting off. Okay, so that is, that's all that. So I feel like you guys are probably super confused. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to explain it. Um, the reason that I'm trying to leave a bit of the silicone is because if I cut this whole triangle out, yes, I could get the star out, but, cause that's kind of the main issue that I'm looking at right now is how am I gonna get the star out? But I don't want all of this. So if I cut all of this silicone away, then when we fill this with resin, this whole bit that I, could potentially cut off will be flat and we'll lose these parts of where the star kind of, you know, creates these points. But I gotta get it out somehow. So I feel like you guys are gonna freak. And honestly, like I am going to freak out as well if this doesn't work. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the side open and pull the star out from the side. I think what I'm gonna try to do is cut straight in the middle and we'll see if I can get the star out that way. Oh, this was so scary to do. I'm just kind of cutting into it with my knife, nothing special. So I do end up cutting about three fourths of the way down the mold. And I do also try to cut sort of like a weird shape so that in case I had to do it in two pieces, it would sort of fit together like a puzzle piece. All right, guys, um, I'm sorry that you weren't able to like see me yank it out, but it was just, it was all grabby and I couldn't, I just had to be like, covering the whole thing you wouldn't have seen literally anything because i was it was very difficult to get this out but i did it and i did it without like completely cutting the mold apart so what we're gonna do now is <laughs> here's my contraption this is still that same light bulb mold i've basically taken a rubber band tied it around the very top part here so that it basically like holds it that way, because this opening was too big. So I tied a rubber band around this part so that it would kind of be smaller. We still have the whole like, you know, bulb part, which is perfect. And then I basically skewered it again. So I kind of stabbed a hole in the sides, like opposite sides, and then stuck a little piece of wood through it. So that way, when we get it, getting it inside is kind of, you know, it's a situation, but it like reinflates. So you kind of have to squish it to get it in there. But once it's in, this will hold the light bulb up so it doesn't like float to the bottom. This is kind of the same system that I used when I did the snow globe. And then we're gonna mix up some resin. I'm gonna have to get some like yellow pigments out and stuff to color this like that bright yellow color. So anyway, I'm gonna get started on rubber banding this together so that it's perfect and then we'll go from there. So what I did forget to do the first time I put this inside the mold is put rocks inside of the light bulb mold. 
And I do this so that it weighs the light bulb mold down and it doesn't float out because when you pour resin around it, it does want to float. And now we are putting a ton of rubber bands around this thing because I want to make sure that it's shut tight so no resin leaks out. So now we're going to start mixing up our resin. So the resin I'm using is the Counterculture DIY Casting Resin. This is a two-part resin, equal parts, so I'm just pouring that in and we're going to mix that up. So for the pigments I'm using, I do show you like four pigments, but I end up using the yellow bumblebee one and then the orange butternut one, and I don't use the other two. Mixing these two colors together literally gave me the absolute perfect color. Oh my god. It's I'm not usually into yellows and oranges, but this was so freaking beautiful. I'm so sorry, but I'm not sorry. Look at this. I just can't. It's so beautiful and perfect. Now we are pouring the resin in and I did kind of pour it in sort of slow just to make sure I didn't overfill it because I honestly didn't know how much it would need, but it ended up only needing one cup. It's done. <laughs> Hopefully I did it. I almost just said I did it. I don't know if we did it yet. I'm very nervous. All right, so we are going to switch up the angle, pop this out and see, see what happens. Yeah. I, I'm assuming we're gonna have to sand some things. <laughs> All right, so I've already taken the rubber bands off of the side, so I guess we just can start peeling this away. Since I cut it down both sides, we should be able to like open it like this. Oh. I successfully popped it out and we got the light bulb mold out. So this is what the bottom is looking like. Pretty, pretty bad, pretty bad. But I have my Dremel tool and I think I'm just gonna like sand this until it's kind of like a nice opening. This freaking Dremel tool, oh my God, I needed this. I really needed this tool. I did a whole video using this tool and like testing it out for the first time. So if you're interested, I will try to link that down in the description. But this tool is so useful. So I'm just kind of sanding those edges, making them not as sharp. I'm cleaning up the bottoms of like the feet and everything and I'm creating space for the light that's going to go inside. Also just talked over it, but I gave you more slow-mo sanding. It's our new, th it's our new thing. Okay. So I have sanded the edges of this like bottom hole. It's not like a perfect hole, but the light I got, it will fit inside. So I got this off of Amazon, by the way, it's just a single light that I'm going to put inside and it has like these little metal wings that help it like stay in there. All right, do you want to turn the lights off? You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> it's so freaking dark in here. Okay. Uh, oh my God. It's beautiful. It looks literally perfect because the points yeah. have that like orange mm -hmm. sort of color to it. And then the center is very yellow. This literally looks like a star fragment yep. from Animal Crossing. Yeah. What? Literally what? Isn't it good? <laughs> it's so cute. It really is. I can't, I kind of can't believe that we did it. Like this looks so cute. <laughs> All right, you guys, so here are some close-up shots and some magical shots of our freaking star fragment from Animal Crossing. <laughs> this I mean okay to be honest I loved it and I hated it because I was just so nervous that it wasn't gonna turn out the way I wanted it to and some parts of it didn't like we had to sand quite a few bits and like this 
chonker of a fr <laughs> freaking mold. But what's great is like, when I first thought of this, I was like, I'm gonna have to destroy this mold. Like this is gonna be a one-time mold. Nah. Yeah, you can probably reuse that. Yeah, I want to make all the different colored star fragments. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think of our star fragment. Just shut up. Literally just shut up. Just shut up. Stop talking about it, but also let us know what you think. <laughs> Stop talking about it, but also talk about it forever, because I'm going to talk about it forever. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me literally everywhere. It is at Artsy Madwoman. I love you guys to absolute death, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Goodbye. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to get taken away! Oh my, God. <laughs> my socks are wet. No! Okay, so what I'm gonna do first. You and your sneezing! How am I explaining this? I don't know, I lost my train of thought all of a sudden. Oh no! So, this point here is one of the foot. Wow, that was. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.